That breaking news and endangered child alert out tonight for two missing children. Take a look at your screen. This is Kyle and Stella Maples. TBI agents say they were last seen earlier today in Van Buren County with their non custodial mother, Angie Maples. Kyle is 11 years old, Stella just six. Angie is believed to be driving a 2012 black Honda Civic with Tennessee tags. If you see them, call police. Hours long chaos tonight in a House committee hearing. I'm talking lawmakers standing and screaming at each other before that committee was briefly shut down. A lot to get to here at 10 o'clock. We're glad you're joining us. I'm Hunter Hoagland. The committee took a minute to cool off then reconvened as part of this week's special session. Lawmakers were debating a controversial bill that would allow people with permits to carry guns in schools. A supporter of the bill tried to end debate before Representative Justin Jones and others even had a chance to speak against it. Parents from the Covenant School watched this chaos and hoped for their chance to testify. Eventually, the committee came back into session and allowed those parents to speak. After two hours of heated debate, the bill failed. Mr. Chairman, you have nine eyes and nine no's. Uh, the tie vote, the, the bill does fail, does not move on to finance. Covenant family strongly opposed that bill and actually sang when the final vote was announced. So what will lawmakers actually achieve before they leave town? Looks like they'll only pass three bills, which critics say have very little to actually do with the Covenant tragedy. Many committees met just to table all the bills on the calendar. So far, the Senate has only passed three bills. The first gives free gun locks to Tennesseans who request them and remove sales tax on gun safes. The second strengthens the TBI background check system, and the third creates a report on child and human sex trafficking in the state. Protesters showed their frustration after the Senate's floor session, begging lawmakers to consider more bills before they go home. One of the big stories we are continuing to follow on Capitol Hill is the use of state troopers against moms who have come to Capitol Hill to call for new gun laws. Yesterday, three protesters were removed from a House subcommittee for holding up small signs. At the beginning of the week, the Republican supermajority decided those signs would not be permitted during the special session. But today, those protesters won a victory in court. Early this morning, a Davidson County judge put down an emergency order blocking enforcement of new House rules designed to clamp down on dissent. The judge ruled these women have a right to free speech. Now a Davidson County Democrat wants the subcommittee chairman who called in those troopers to apologize. This is the Civil Justice Committee. Yeah. And if we can't let Tennesseans gather in front of us peacefully, and share their views, then what are we doing here yeah. as a subcommittee? Yeah. And all of this has raised questions about using highway patrol troopers against protesters. News Channel 5 investigates looked into all of it. You can see what we found on our website. And our crews have been relentless with bringing you the information about what's happening at the Capitol this week, and we will continue to be there again tomorrow. You can catch up on all of our coverage right now. That's newschannel5.com. Well, in the Weather Center now with meteorologist Bree Smith, uh, we've come up with a lot of adjectives here. We've said oppressive, offensive when it comes to the weather. I'm thinking disrespectful, Dis <laughs> disgusting, out of line, out of line. <laughs> Say, I know Done you like it. it hot. That's not true. That's not true. No. He hates it. No, yeah, it is. This is an unusually hot stretch, you mm -hmm. know, and it's been interesting to talk about. Like you said, all the adjectives yep. are correct, but we're not setting records, mm -hmm. but we are in territory we are not typically in. Right. And it's such a prolonged stretch. We've talked about this a lot that heat has a cumulative effect on the body. So if you are one of the folks that's working out there, right? If you're at BNA, if you're in construction, if you are, oh my goodness, in landscaping, especially they're really struggling right now, or just kiddos that can't go outside for recess. This is not a fun stretch of weather to be in. And with the heat, the humidity together, it is dangerously hot and humid in the afternoons. Top temperature today, 99. So close to that triple digit mark, but we have not touched it. In fact, we have not touched triple digits at all this year. The last time we've seen a triple digit temperature was last September. So this is unusually hot weather for us. The record for today, 103. Record's not in jeopardy, but we're a little too close for comfort. And it's too hot outside for comfort. 80s right now, upper 80s to near 90. You factor in that heat index and it is steamy tonight. That's why heat advisories remain in effect for the orange colors. Portions of Kentucky were upgraded from a heat advisory to an excessive heat warning because of the prolonged heat and humidity. 
Hunter, these are set to expire Friday, but I would not be surprised to see them extended into Saturday because this is going to take a while to break. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a bit. All right, Bree, thank you. Well, heat and humidity, as Bree just said, remains the story this week in Tennessee, but it isn't stopping folks from visiting the Wilson County Tennessee State Fair. News Channel 5's Araceli Crescencio was out there today and shows us some measures in place to help people stay cool. Hello, doll. Helen McPeak knows her way around the Wilson County Tennessee State Fair better than most people. Down here is our 4-H. She's been attending the fair for more than 20 years and now serves as the executive director. She says she's never seen a heat index like this week's. You, usually we will have some 90 days. We love having 80 days and 70 and 60 nights, uh, but this year uh, God gave us something different. To help people beat the heat, the fair is adding more cooling areas and inviting people to enjoy some of the activities offered inside. So we are trying to do everything that we can uh, to, to make everybody as comfortable and still come out and have a good time. Uh, like this building, the Maiden Tennessee building. We've got 22,000 square feet that is uh, air conditioned. Uh, with restrooms. There are 60 buildings within the fairgrounds where attendees can stop by for some cool air. In all of our commercial booth areas, we've got fans there, uh, so that, that makes it better. It's still warm, uh, but it, it makes it more comfortable. This year, there are close to 1,600 people volunteering at the fair. They're all receiving water as well as electrolyte drinks. Wilson Bank and Trust is also handing out free lemonade. At the end of the day, McPeak says there's no replacing summertime fun. We, we try very, very hard to make it uh, something that uh, is for everyone. And, uh, and, and we hope that people will make memories that, that will last them a lifetime. In Lebanon, Araceli Crescencio, News Channel 5. I'm glad I milked that cow when it was cooler last week. Maple was lucky. Yeah, maple was lucky. All right. <laughs> Unfortunately, when it is this hot, not everybody has the luxury of working inside. That includes construction workers and landscapers. And in a city on the rise, there is plenty of them out there in this heat. Darnell Pitts owns Rescue 5 Renovation and Lawn Care. Not only does he have to push through the sweat and heat, but so does employees. Heat stress is recognized as a hazard by OSHA here in Tennessee, but there is no rule mandating specific measures be taken. Pitts make sure his employees get rest, stay hydrated, and take breaks and drink plenty of water. Sitting down is not going to help you cool down. You need some water to help you hydrate your body, get you feeling back the way you need to be feeling. And like Bree said, this heat will continue the rest of the week. If you have to go outside, it's also recommended you wear those light colors. So many businesses are struggling to find good employees. That includes the business of saving lives. The Nashville Fire Department is offering sign on bonuses and pay raises as it works to fill paramedic and EMT spots. The fire department said it's fully staffed, but is wanting to add more crews as the city continues growing. Starting pay for paramedics is more than $77,000. If you have an associate's or bachelor's degree, that number is even higher. We're reaching out to community colleges. We're reaching out to uh, conferences and things, medical conferences across the country and across the nation. We're visiting those places. We're talking to those people. We're, we're having a successful recruitment process, uh, but we want to extend that even further. And if you're interested in becoming an EMT or paramedic, NFD recommends reaching out to one of the community colleges in our area about getting certified. It's not just the Nashville Fire Department that's looking for more EMTs. Back in May, we talked with Acadian Ambulance Service here in Nashville. The company does mostly non-emergency transports like taking people to nursing homes, dialysis, or to and from the hospital. It's been experiencing though a shortage of EMTs. Acadian will pay for new employees to go through a 10-day emergency medical responder course, as well as the 10-week EMT training. You can read more about that opportunity on our website. That's newschannel5.com. It's a luxury at home many of us don't even think about, how thousands are getting a discount on it. Plus, it's been 25 years since a theme park closed, the way some are reliving the past.